Hi everyone, good morning, welcome. Oh, on the Facebook one, it kind of looks like I'm naked. I need to pull this up. <laughs> um, welcome, this is Devoted Heart Lauren with the Monday Awareness Upgrade. I've been a little bit uh, out of it lately. I have, I, I, I believe I went live, no, I didn't do this last week. I did it the week before, but yeah, it's been a little spotty lately, so I apologize. Uh, yeah, it's just been like feeling a little, a little under the weather, had some, some health stuff that I was dealing with and then just, it, it felt a little bit hard to kind of get out of it. I felt like I was a little bit stuck in a rut. So I'm sure we've all been there. Um, so yeah, it feels great to, to be able to go live and in integrity on time on the right day, all of that. Uh, I'm also going to be doing tuning fork Tuesday, um, in theory every week. So, t so tune in for that. Last week, you can check out the video that I posted. It's about the Mars and Venus tuning fork, the masculine and feminine. So today, I want to tune in to the new moon. I've also, because I've been a little bit out of it, I also, I missed the last new moon, the new moon in Taurus. I mean, it happened with or without my paying attention to it, but I didn't really do, I didn't really like drop into to ceremony for, to, to welcome the new cycle. And this time... I also didn't really do much. I usually have a women's circle. If you haven't gotten the chance to come to my women's circle, I highly recommend joining us. It's a super sweet group that will resume one way or another at one point or another. Um, but yeah, usually what we do is we share and we pick a card and we do a little ritual. So the new moon is when the moon is dark in the sky. It's the beginning of the cycle. So it is when the energy then is rising. It's a place of of going inward okay seeing what has happened what you want to happen reconnecting to your path your values what you are creating and then moving forward with intention okay and so then we can reflect back each cycle okay what worked what didn't work what are we creating what are we recommitting to in this cycle and you know we do that with the new year we do that with certain demarcations of time throughout the year in, in various ways but the moon is something that it's, you know, it's, it's real. Even if you believe it was like put there by aliens or whatever, and it's some sort of weird robot <laughs> or whatever the conspiracy theories are, it's still there and it's still reflecting more and more light off of the sun as it moves towards the full moon and then declining in its reflection of light as we go back towards the new moon, okay? So now we're in the rising of light, the rising of energy part of the cycle, part of the 28 day cycle. So. This new moon is in Gemini, which um, we're actually at the end of Gemini season right now in terms of the sun signs, the, the people whose birthdays are aligned with the Gemini archetype. But that's just because the new moons got a little bit thrown off. We had two Aries new moons this year, so it kind of self-corrects after a while, but we kind of have the new moon of that, of whatever particular sign at the end of the cycle where everyone's birthdays are, if that makes sense. Okay, so Gemini New Moon, it is the the transition from spring to summer, and it is an air sign, and it's very much about communication. It's ruled by the planet Mer Mercury, which is all about communication. So if you know any Geminis or people that have a lot of Gemini energy, Gemini archetypes, so it doesn't have to be like you're a sun sign, you're born a Gemini, there's a lot of planets that influence our, our chart and the moment that we're born. So you can have a lot of Gemini energy, even if you're not a Gemini, right? So if you know someone who has a lot of Gemini energy, maybe they're very communicative. They really like to talk and share, okay? Maybe they're a little bit, uh, a little bit all over the place, a little bit air energy, kind of frenetic. It's because it's an air sign, it can get very ungrounded, okay? It can get very, very much in the air, element and in the ethereal okay so coming back to earth balancing gemini energy balancing air energy with earth energy is a really useful practice so so having routine um and it's also a really fun sign it's really fun really playful flirty adventurous all the these sorts of things okay so it's not it's not bad it's definitely definitely not bad all the signs have their their shadow and their their assets okay and we're looking at how to how to really utilize the assets of any particular archetype and minimize the shadow or work with the shadow. So we're gonna drop in. I'm gonna pick a card from this Heart Path Oracle deck. I love this deck. 
uh, it has, it's a very intricately designed deck and the descriptions are quite lengthy. So I probably will read the whole thing because we have time, why not? But yeah, let's start there. So this will be our card for whoever's tuning into this for our little community, our little collective for the Gemini new moon. And if anybody wants me to pick a card specifically for them, you can drop a note in the comments or message me and I'm happy to do so, especially since I missed my circle this month. So our card, the connection, take deep breaths. That's always good advice. So here's the card, showing it to all the cameras. It has a, a tree or like a, a forest of trees, really. They're all interconnected. There's some faces, there's some roses, there's some sheep, uh, there's a couple birds. So let's see what it says, the connection. Okay. The card you've selected shows four beautiful interlacing trees. I'm just going to hold it up. Mm, I don't know how to get it. I guess that's pretty good for both cameras, but it shows uh, four beautiful interlacing trees. The central mother figure transforms into a tree that connects the others in the form of a heart. To her left is a small child sprouting branches and roots. The branches connect with the mother's heart. To her right are two trees that have grandparent energy. There are four sheep, two on each side, looking directly at us. The sky turns to a deep blue as it rises from a lavender horizon. Four celestial beings emerge, offering two roses and two doves. The message. Two doves have come into your life, bringing a message beyond time and space. Doves are connected to the angelic realm and carry your thoughts and desires to the heavens. They have a gentle, soothing vibration known for bringing peace and calm to any situation. They are compassionate creatures that restore tranquility to those who have been traumatized. Your doves want you to slow down and let go of the turmoil that is currently surrounding you. Hmm. <laughs> Remember to take deep breaths when you feel stressed. Doves also signify a shift in consciousness pertaining to relationships. If you are not already in a loving relationship, it is quite possible that you will find yourself happily involved with a romantic partner sometime soon. One way or the other, current personal connections will grow stronger. Hope and magic are in the air. Follow the doves and let them lead you deep into your heart. There you will find the peace and meaning you so desire. The four celestial guides bring with them hope, love, and protection. They are here to show you your soul purpose and to remind you to stay focused when working on a heart-based project. Your loyalty, persistence, and hard work will be rewarded. These messengers are part of a larger family that watches over you. They may not be visible in this dimension, but if you meditate on them, you will feel their presence. The heart formed by the trees in the middle of the card indicates that you love nature and are strongly connected to it. Touch, hug, and spend time around trees. They will nurture you right back. Sheep symbolize purity and innocence and feeling connected to a community. They want you to make important decisions with your heart, not your head. This will bring love and light to your life. And this card, every card has an affirmation in this deck. The affirmation here is, I understand that peace starts in the heart. Hmm. I love that. Um, and that's, that's a really good antidote for some of the shadow, some of the, the troubling aspects of the Gemini archetype, because I said it can be very ungrounded, it can be very frenetic. So remembering that you can start in your own heart. You can, you can connect to love in your own heart. You can create peace in your own heart. And you have this eternal quality that is unaffected by all the fluctuations, all the wildness that might be going around you, going on around you. So, um, so yeah, that feels really good because yeah, I, I, like I said, I've I've been a little bit under the weather for the past month and I've had some some trouble kind of like unsticking myself from that mindset of like I just have to rest and I'm not feeling well and whatever. I'm on the couch all day. Um, so reminding myself and reminding ourselves that we can create whatever from within we can remind ourselves of whatever it's that's within us okay so so creating peace balancing frenetic energy so noticing what's going on around you without being too drawn into it and as much as i feel like i got a little bit swept up in my own predicament lately i do 
I do notice how my yoga practice and like that awareness and by yoga practice, I mean the philosophy, the mindset, not like the poses that I do or don't do, (laughs) um, how that helps me when I feel like I'm having a hard time because having a hard time can easily spiral downward into having a harder time or continuing to have a hard time. And because of my awareness, I notice that even when things feel really tough, I can see beyond it or I can see outside of it. I can see the bigger picture. So it's like, hmm, wow, this really sucks right now. You know, I don't feel well. This, there's this problem, this problem, this problem, whatever it is, the whole situation. Um, but I know that things are changing. I understand the impermanent versus the permanent. Okay. And I know the difference between how I feel and who I am. Right. So, so if we can all practice identifying that it it helps to, to stabilize, it helps to balance frenetic energy. Okay. So how I feel might be sick or tired or stressed or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't want to invalidate my own experience because then it's kind of just like sweeping it under the rug. Okay. So what I'm feeling is valid and real in a certain sense, in a certain realm, in the physical realm. And in another sense, I can transform it. I can transform it instantly in theory, right? But there's always another instant. As long as we're living and breathing, there's always another instant, right? So so sometimes there's a sense of, oh, that didn't work. So like, why bother, right? We've all been there. I've, like For me, it looks like, oh, it's not working. So let me just eat another cookie, right? <laughs> let me just like indulge in something that I know isn't going to be the best for me, isn't going to feel good in an hour from now or a day from now, but it's a instant gratification. Okay. So that's what, that's what that kind of mentality of like, whatever, it's not working looks like, but we can come back. We can begin again. And the new moon is an invitation of the cosmos of the earth and its relationship to the sun and the moon and the stars to begin again the moon is dark in the sky and we're trusting that day by day the moon is going to be reflecting more and more light off of the sun and the cycle rises the cycle falls and then the next cycle emerges okay so there a new cycle is unfolding so let's sit together for a few minutes and yeah, if anyone has any reflections on the card or anything that I said or any intentions for the new moon, ultimately with my moon circles, we are setting intentions for the cycle. So drop into that. You can share that. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. <laughs> Let's bring the hands to the heart. So just reflecting for a moment on the past cycle, the past 28 days, what happened, what didn't happen. I notice I want to bring my hand down to my belly. So I have a heart hand and a belly hand. You can do the same if that works for you. And just letting it go, forgiving, letting go, making peace. forgiving myself for any responsibility or guilt that I took on absorbed around not feeling well or perpetuating not feeling well I'm just feeling stuck I'm just letting go of that so just clearing space from the past cycle while noticing the relevant messages and lessons that you can discern And then drawing energy down from the top of the head, through the body, down through the sit bones into the earth. So you're transmuting the air and ether through the heart, down into the earth. So it's manifest. So it's not just a bunch of ideas and stress and frenetic energy floating around. It's actually something that you are creating, you are enacting. And 
So what are you creating? What are you enacting in this moon cycle? With this fun, vibrant, communicative energy of the Gemini cycle and archetype. How can you utilize that fun, light, expansive air energy, which is also the, the element of the heart, the element of love? How can you utilize that while at the same time drawing it down into the physical world, into what you want to do, what you want to be, what you want to create? A few more deep breaths. And bowing your head to your heart, to the seeds that you're planting. If you haven't already, get clear about one seed that you're planting. What are you working on? Who are you being? What quality are you carrying with you? And blinking your eyes open. And again, if anyone wants to share anything, I'd love to, to witness you. Um, my intention for this month is to continue working on my Live Your Yoga course. For those of you that haven't, that aren't familiar, I have a signature course that's founded in yoga philosophy. So the Yama and Niyama, the yogic lifestyle principles like non-harming and truth and discipline, just to name a few, and integrating those into your life. So it's group coaching, meditation, yoga philosophy, all wrapped into what was a three month program, I'm turning it into a six month program and there's gonna be an option to do it recorded at your own pace. So if you're interested in that, reach out. I'm, I'm working on it now, but I'm also gonna start taking applications and um, I'm talking to people. So if you wanna hop on a free call with me and see if it's right for you and just kind of pick my brain about, pick each other's brains, I guess, about the program and, and, um, and the philosophy, I'm, I'm happy to do so. I'm also starting to offer a meditation on Thursday mornings. I was seeking to offer it at 7.30. I might move it to 8. I'd love for people to weigh in on that. It'll be available in person in my home studio in Jersey City, or you can tune in online. And that'll include sound meditation. That'll include breath work. That'll include um, seated, kind of guided visualization and meditation as well. Okay? So thank you so much for, for tuning in. And this felt super helpful for me. I hope it I hope it served you as well. And I'll see you soon. Bye.